together, you seem not to think that God is important. And until the bottom starts to fall out. And you recognize that you didn't necessarily read the fine print that was in the mortgage contract. <laughs> that, that, that you missed a few steps in the marital contract. Or perhaps it wasn't as fabulous as you thought it would be when they put those letters before your name. Mr. or Mrs., or they put those letters behind your name, BA, MBA, MA, JD, PhD. Things were not what you thought they might be. And you found that you looked good, but on the inside, you didn't necessarily feel good. Mm -hmm. Well, what's this got to do with getting the Jesus? That ain't never stopped me from getting to Jesus. It is emotional, psychological, or physical block. If it keeps you from entertaining, interacting, and socializing with the people of God. Because I have met no one who has personally walked up, sat down, and talked to Jesus Christ and could ask him about all the world's problems. Mm -hmm. However, everyone I know, including myself, that has ever been blessed, got blessed at the hands of someone else. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so before you turn away from me mentally, Brother Greg said the Bears ain't playing today, so I can preach <laughs> as long as I want, but I know somebody else is here, don't get in here and talk about it. Hurry up now. <laughs> I'm hungry. So I'll get to my main point. Brothers and sisters, life has many obstacles, some of which we create ourselves, and others we are born. These things can and will make life difficult to live with and live through. However, God is able. Regardless of what is in your way, what you do to get to Jesus, it, it has deliverance for your life. Let, let, me, let me say that once more. God is a, regardless of what is in your way, what you do to get to Jesus, who has deliverance for our lives. Mm -hmm. See, it, it, it's really about what you overcome, what doesn't stop you. It is said that Edison found 9,999 ways not to make the light bulb before Opportunity 10,000, where he discovered the light bulb. You know, I wonder if that story was before or after Louis Latimer's invention helped him out. But regardless, it is the number of times that he attempted without success. How many times have we attempted? Were there 9,999 times? I have three quick supporting points and I'll get out your way as you meal on that. The first, my three points are the following. To get to Jesus, you must bring what you have. Bring what you have. Bring. When he had come to Capernaum several days after, it was heard that he was in a home. And many were gathered together so that there, were no, there was no longer room, not even near the door. And he was speaking the word to them. And they came bringing to him a paralytic carried by four men, being unable to get to him because of the crowd, they removed the roof above. 
And when they had dug an opening, they let down the pallet on which the paralytic was lying. To bring, bring is a verb in definition, meaning come to a place with someone or something. To cause someone or something to come <coughs> to a place. To make someone or something move in a particular direction or way. To cause someone or something to be in charge, excuse me, uh, something to be in or change to a particular state or condition. To involve someone in a particular activity. To initiate legal action against someone. To force oneself to do something unpleasant or distressing. As believers in God, it comes to a point that if you're going to be free or you're going to be all that you can be in Christ, you must bring what you have to God. It should not matter who is there, how many other people are there, or that, uh, or they're going to say something about you. You need to bring everything you have. All you should care about is getting to God, and nothing should stop you from doing this task. See, this passage is an example of true ministry and the power of a relationship with God. See, the friends take their friend who is a paralytic. See, he's unable to walk to Jesus. Ha ha have you ever brought somebody to Jesus? Someone you know who can't get to God by themselves. <coughs> See, someone who does not have the strength or the wherewithal or the will to get to Jesus. Did somebody bring you to God? Amen. <laughs> Did they have to overcome obstacles placed in their way to make sure that you could meet Jesus and be healed? What, what the friends of the paralytic understood is that despite the number of people in the house, despite our ability to enter through the door, if we can find a way to get to see him, our friend will be healed. Why did we say they are friends? It doesn't explicitly say this in the passage you read. Well, <coughs> I'm glad you asked. Because see, only a friend would work this intently to ensure you get healed. See, not only are these friends, but they are believers in the power of God. Mm -hmm. see, see, you know, you know, see, see, look, when, when I go back and I think about high school, I, I, I remember it fondly that I had some good friends. Mm -hmm. But wasn't none of those friends that I had in high school that they wasn't seeking to bring me to Jesus. Okay? <laughs> they brought me to some things, but it wasn't Jesus. You know, I met uh, Irk and Jerk with them. I, I, I met Mad Dog 2020. I, I, I met some Cisco with these friends. Me and Coke 45 real acquainted with one another when I was in high school, but none of them brought me to Jesus. But, but in my memory banks, I consider those people to be my friends. But <laughs> none of them with me when I got so inebriated that I, I came home and laid
are a special kind of friend because, because they also believe in the power of God. That they knew that if they could just get the man to where God, if they could just get the man to where God was, that he could get some healing. Now, now watch this, watch this. They don't know how he'll be healed, but they know that if they can get him to God, his life will be different. The passage does not read and say they know that if they can get the man on the mat to God, that he will allow him to walk again. That's not what it says. It says that if I can get you to God, I know that your life can be changed, that you can be healed. See, that's the way we ought to feel as well. See, we don't know. That's right. We don't know what God will do in somebody's life. Hey, nine times out of ten, we don't know what God will do in our lives. That's right. What we ought to be doing is praying for God's faithfulness that he will show up, not how he's going to show up. Yes. And most of us get frustrated with God because God don't show up the way we want God to show up. So if we leave and get mad, Or in 
exclamations is em emphasizing something surprising or remarkable. You can be a determiner or a pronoun. As a determiner, it's asking for information and specifying something. I'm sorry, what? That's what it wants to be determined in. You is a pronoun, which means it's used to refer to the person or people that the speaker is addressing. It's used to refer to the person being addressed together with other people regarded in the same class. <laughs> it's used in exclamations to address one or more people. It is with what you bring to Christ through circumstances, circumstances requiring you to push, press, and challenge all you have that showcases <laughs> your faith in Christ's ability to change your life. You have to get to a point that nothing else matters more than you being whole. Well, or using good black church phraseology than being saved. See, it is the challenges you overcome as you bring your issues, your concerns, and your baggage to Jesus. We sing songs with words to say, there's nothing better than knowing Jesus. Yes. But do we get to know him? Do, do we benefit from a personal relationship with Jesus? You know, with all our other stuff, and all. Which, which do we have room? to pay attention to. The stuff we like, the stuff that we need, or we say we need, or God. One reason we struggle so as a people is we don't seek to have close personal relationships with one another anymore. You know, they, they, they told us technology would make our lives mm -hmm. simpler. Mm -hmm. But it's only separated us further apart. Amen. Amen. You know, there are people who mistake Facebook friends for real life friends. <laughs> Have you ever said, I don't see such and such, and the only way I keep up with them is on Facebook? <laughs> Got their phone number. <laughs> know where they live. <laughs> Y'all not separated by any mileage other than a quick trip in your car. But you would like a page before you would get up and place a phone call. <laughs> and, 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 and see, the church, this is really problematic for. Because the word tells us that we should fail not to assemble together. I need to help you. That assembly is just not Sunday morning. And based upon how some of y'all sit in here on Sunday morning, I would say you don't know each other because there ain't but 40 of you, but you sit on the opposite ends of the church. And if I cool rock in some sections of this sanctuary, I would hit nothing but good. <laughs> and then we why we can't minister and be close to one another. Heck, we won't even sit close to one another. <laughs> Verse 5 says, and Jesus seen their faith. It was what they believed that healed the paralytic. Everyone believed and believed so strongly have you ever believed so strong for yourself or for someone else? See, we are salespeople for products and services, whether we know it or not. See, in other words, we are people with influence on others, and others are watching what we do, and they usually follow accordingly. Mm -hmm. See, my mama, when I was young, did a couple of things that I really got a problem with in my youth. And that was she would make me 
not the bathroom floor <laughs> and the kitchen floor. And then she would also make me clean the toilet because she said the less was mine. <laughs> <laughs> and to do so, I got a couple things that have resonated so strongly in my life that at 47, I still use them today. Let me help you. I got a yellow pen a row of clothes. <laughs> Say what you want. I got a red bucket <laughs> with, the, with the lip on it. I got the double lip on mine. I got the yellow mop. Got the yellow mop. This is where it gets good. And the pencil. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about. And, 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 and the hot water with a little dab and the house smell like pine salt for hours. But here's the part, here's the, here's the one that gets you. The, the color office. In the green bottle, they just tear the little strip off the top. And you just go around the base of the bathtub just like this. <laughs> Turn a little water on, scrub your behind. <laughs> got that good shine on the little meal doing everything the way. But I got that from my mom. That's right. My mother's work in that sold that experience mm -hmm. to me. So when I participated in that experience, then I took that experience to my house. We fail every day. And see, one of the problems that our community has is we lie real, real good. Let me, let me help you see. See, the fight. So for those of us who wasn't around, in the 60s, and those who were, you will have some people that wax eloquently and tell you that they was on the front line in the 60s. Everybody wasn't on the front line in the 60s. See, it's real popular today to say, I believed in Dr. King. It was some black folks that did not believe in Dr. King when Dr. King was ministering. So don't sit here today and how about you were spoiled and you never showed up. So see, it, 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 and although we went to church, and we went to church collectively, just because you went to church didn't mean you got a relationship with God. What you got was some tradition. You didn't get active in ministry. You just kind of hung around. Because <laughs> if, if that wasn't the case, then you would have more serious relationships Mm -hmm. I'm still under contract. I'm going to tell the truth while I'm alive. <laughs> what you believe is indicated by what you do. And I'm sorry, if you do nothing, you believe nothing. <laughs> don't holler about, I don't go to church. But I call on God more. Call all you want. <laughs> the word says, everybody that says, Lord, Lord. So we are salespeople. And these people can be family and friends or even the so-called familiar stranger. Don't, don't look at me funny. The, the familiar stranger is somebody you see regularly during your daily routines, but you don't know them. And don't, let me, I'll make, the, I'll make the familiar stranger real common. There are familiar strangers in church. Some people you see every Sunday. You don't talk to them. But you see them every Sunday. So when they go missing, and then somebody say, well, I ain't seen Sister So-and-so in a while. 
Uh, and why is this problematic in Westwood and not other churches? I'll tell you, and I'm glad you asked. Because I ain't but 40 of you. And if you lose one in 40, how are you ever ready to grow and be what God wants you to be and you can't take care of what? I gave you milk, for you were not yet ready for whole food. You got to cut across this field. <laughs> hey. Which is easier? To say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up, pick up your pallet, and walk. But so that you may know that the Son of Man has the authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, I say to you, get up, pick up your pallet, and go home. And he got up immediately, picked up his pallet, and went out in the sight of everyone so that they are all amazed and were glorifying God, saying, we have never seen anything like this. Have is a verb, which means possess, own, or hold. It, it also means an experience to undergo. We all have something, and some of us have several things we need to bring to God. However, we people do not bring, people do not bring themselves and the things they have to God. Church folks will seek to tell you, you need to be healed. Or exactly what you should do to be healed. Mm -hmm. You know you just need to come on and do blah, blah, blah. And get on right with God. Okay. But we don't talk about having a relationship with one another. See, because we're salespeople, people read us. And they watch what you, what you do. And you know the first teller of who watches what you do? Your children. Yo, your children know what you believe. Better than anybody. And the question is, have your children rationalized your contradiction? Because your children, you'll tell them, well, you sell out for God, but you ain't so bad. They don't really care about your healing. They just want to understand how it happened. See, the problem that the church people were having with the faith of the, of, of, of the poor man in the paralytic is they don't know how it happened. See, there's some things that happen to us that, that we can't explain. See, that's what faith is all about. That's why the faith concept is so hard for others, because faith is truly believing something will happen, but you don't know exactly what it is that's going to happen. Who, 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 who can say your, your sins are forgiven? See, they're caught up. Just like us, and, and one of the reasons that people have some trouble in coming to church is because we, we all caught up. We caught up in our title. We, 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 we bring what we got, but we're not bringing it to God. We're just coming in church. And thinking if we hang around church long enough, you know, that, well, that just looks good on the resume. It'll be something you can check off to make sure that we can lay you out in front of the church when you die. Y'all can look at me like that if you want to. <laughs> But do you have a true, earnest relationship? And the relationship changes the way you behave and what you do. And this goes well past where you work. I'm sorry. This is personal ministry in your life. It's not your vocation you get paid for. And if it is, you really got to watch out. Because it's still about how you treat people. Let me help you. I, I was coming home yesterday after U of L loss. I was lamenting the U of L loss. I really felt kind of bad about the U of L loss. And, and the Kentucky loss didn't make the U of L loss feel no better. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tell, tell your husband, I'm sorry. It didn't work. <laughs> and, 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 and I was at a stoplight. And I was trying to, to look at something, and I'm thinking, I you know how you get it to stop, like, you know, how you think you got a couple minutes. Mm -hmm. 
and, and the person behind me blew. I forgot I was a preacher for about two minutes. I looked on I share with you an example of my life because when have you forgotten you were a child of God? And, and, and what situations with other people who are watching you and watching what you do, have, have you almost lost your cool or your candle? And, and what, what situations where you've seen opportunities to minister and be all that God has required and asked of you to be, and you stepped over those opportunities to minister to other people? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It ain't just me. See, religious folks have criticized Jesus for healing because they see him and not as the, uh, as the son of God. Just like people see those today who need healing, who, you know, and see, let me, let me help. healing and help. You know, some people need healing, but the healing is actually help. Some people need your help is what they need. But, but will you continue to walk past those people who need your help? Because what you'll say is, I'm tired. <laughs> These folk done got on my nerves today. But, but, but when you get on your knees and you start asking God, We all want to be like Christ until we have to be Christian. People want to be comfortable with what they do not understand or comprehend. So parenthetically speaking, the paralytic has displayed such great faith. First, he, he came up. He, he's had some prayers. He, he's prayed. God provides literally feet to his prayers. Think about it for a moment. You can't tell me that the man laid out on the mat, been paralyzed his whole life, the whole community know he's paralyzed, that he ain't been praying to God for some kind of healing, some kind of miracle to happen in his life. So he may one day walk. God so moves people around him to bring him to Jesus. Who is on your heart that God's been asking you to break the church that you ain't brought the church? Who has been on your heart for you to pray for or say a kind word to or send a card to say, you know what, I know you're struggling, but Jesus loves you and so do I. Or you, as, how can I help you? I got some moments. What can I do to help bridge the gap? Who has God placed on your heart to do that? Because, see, they, they did that. And they came to this man. Look, a man, and it, and it looks like a situation that has no hope because he's been paralyzed and they don't know what else to do but to bring him to Jesus. Mm -hmm. It is their faith that God sees. And think about this. They're bringing what looks like someone who has no hope past the crowd. Mm -hmm. Past the people who say, my problem is more important than yours. Mm -hmm. Past the people that say, I want to see it first. Mm -hmm. Past those people. Past the people who say, I don't know why they bring him to God, because can't nobody do nothing for him. Oh, you know how we do. Yeah, I know that family ain't never been no good. So ain't no reason for them to come in church. We took a pass in. Matter of fact, they tore away. They made a way to God. We are, we live in, in, in the most technologically advanced society in this world. And we won't get up out of bed and roll over and get in a car and come to church. He's bringing somebody who looks like he is in a hopeless situation to see God. Pray what you have. If it's nothing, bring it in the door. If it's a whole lot of 
baggage. Fresh bring it to the door. Good And allow the relationship with God to make your journey lighter than what it is before you came in. Notice how I say first. There'll be sometimes God might not take the bags from you. As a matter of fact, God might add, it feels like God might add one or two more to you. <laughs> but if you trust God, if you trust Him, your healing will come to pass. <laughs> the God's name. Amen. Amen.